Hey everybody, so tonight we've got something a little odd. What I thought I'd do is take a twist uh, from where we've been going. We've been talking about various types of areas to prospect and various things you're looking for, as well as an understanding of the tools of the trade, the gold pan and the gold sluice, and how that all fits together into kind of when you start looking what you're looking for. Tonight I'm going to twist that a little bit and we're going to talk a little bit about some more puzzling gold clues. Specifically, some things that came up in the last few episodes where we talked about gold in the desert and what's the strangest thing you found in your gold pan or your sluice box. And somebody mentioned square nails. And that got me to thinking, you know, square nails are not the only thing you're going to be looking for if you're looking for puzzling clues to gold. But square nails are a good one. Let me show you a little bit of what I mean by that. Uh, I'm going to check, make sure we've got our transmission going here on Facebook. And then our retransmission over on the YouTubes. Prospector Jess channel. So I'm Prospector Jess, HowardOminer.com, HuntingForGold.com. Tonight's episode, again, is brought to you by... The gold DVD collection, it's still on sale. we got a thing going on through the uh, next week. And so check out sourdoughminer.com GPC. That's where you go look for that offer. You can read about it there. I'm not going to go into it right now. But check it out. See if you're interested. Go ahead and take it up. There's a good price right now. So check it out. Um, so on that front of what we're looking for, let me make sure we got people coming in. Checking our... More puzzling gold clues transmission here. Look, there you are. See? All 12 of you in climbing. We have five comments right now. It is Saturday night. And we have Brad from Texas. Good to see you, Brad. And there's Charles and Wayne Peterson. They're both watching and waving. Awesome topics. Thanks, Wayne. I appreciate that coming from you. Uh, I'm having fun. It's, you know, <laughs> to me, talking gold and talking about gold finding is just second nature. Uh, some people are that way. I bet if we talk to Wayne, we'll find similar, similar fashion. So uh, what I enjoy to do is to show you kind of the insights and what I see in a picture. And I have no problem explaining the why. I'm kind of into that. That's my engineering background. But I also have the art, which is comes from my parents and my father and mother's side. Uh, they were into theater arts and costuming and, and, and plays and drama and movies and television shows even, that kind of stuff. So pretty good stuff. Uh, Bob Sheasley's here. Vic Taz here from Australia checking in. Okay, so let's get going. Tonight we're going to talk a bit about puzzling. Now let's make sure we got our audio. Here from Australia checking in. Okay, so. All right. So, what I thought we would do, I had a whole different idea in mind and I completely threw it out at the last minute. And that's the way these shows go. Um, this, is a, this is an idea I got from you guys the other night when we were talking about square nails. And I thought, you know what, let me, let me share a little bit about that kind of stuff. So, you know, when we look at square nails, this is what you're talking about. There's some brads there, a little one, and then there's a great big square nail. Now this was found down on the hillside. The little nails I found by the bucket load, and that's what gave me the idea. And what I was going to explain to you is when you're looking at a prospect, say like this gulch on the front picture here. Let me go. Let me give you the fully expanded vision, version. If you're looking at a place like this and you start finding a whole bunch of those square nails up on up on that palisade, you know, see over in this area right in here, you might wonder if there was a wagon trail that kind of was coming down from this area and working its way down the hillside, and and one of those mules got a little obstinate, which they tended to do. And decided to bolt and took the whole train over. Now, if it did and it was an ore wagon, it was more than nails that went. And this would be a perfect place for you to go hunt for the elusive and great good stuff we call gold. Because somewhere, if that thing dumped in this region, I would check right in here with your detector. And look for whether or not some ore with some 
you know, some nice chispas got dumped there that has nice gold still left in it. Little remnant ore pieces that could be quite handy and valuable and not where they belong. That's part of what you're doing when you're looking at gold prospecting. You're looking for where gold might be and that could be uh, any number of places. You know, gold is where you find it has kind of two meanings. One is, well, it's just arbitrary, fickle. It, it lands any old place. Eh, yeah, okay. Uh, gold is where you find it, the real meaning that a lot of times a lot of prospectors don't understand and don't use correctly is wherever you look and you enjoy what you see in life, it's gold. That's a different animal entirely. And I would challenge you to think about when you're looking for gold and you're disappointed, think about life and what you're finding and what you're doing when you get out in the outdoors. Because Gold is where you find it. When you think of it in that context, being grateful and having an attitude of gratitude goes a long way. And it also can help you when you're looking for the <clears throat> donkey's residue or the, uh, the dumping of the ass. So right here we have an, a zone up on this hillside, for example, that might be full of these nails. Now, it's going to create a real problem for you because the nails will fire your detector like crazy. But at the same time, if you can tune your detector to, you know, avoid the iron a little bit and get a pattern up to rake every spot and maybe dig a little bit to find out what you're seeing, it won't be long before if there is any, any chispas, any ore that got dumped or any nuggets that got dumped, better yet, uh, you can start finding them. And that's something to be aware of in this kind of condition. I just thought I'd bring that point up again and point out the scenario where it might happen because it's not uncommon for these things to be found. What is uncommon is to chase them as a clue. And so it's a more puzzling gold clue, but if you put it in the context of how did that nail get to be there and, and how old is this particular nail? Now I found it along with these nails on the other side of the river, I found a whole stack of rocks. You know, we're talking about six feet high and flat as a pancake on top, like a little cabin structure was on it, which is quite possible. It's also quite possible that on top of that structure of rocks was an ore processing situation where somebody was using a rock crusher or some other equipment to, to you know, remove their material and run it down some, some, uh, some form of sluice or dredge. Um, wasn't far from the water, but it was high out of the water. So it made me think of. Now, what I found there was kind of interesting. I found remnants of an old riveted shovel and riveted set of pipes. That made me think of, oh, this might be more of an industrial kind of site where, you know, they might have had an, an, an old donkey to power a crusher or they might have had some other. So see the clues we're looking for now? We're looking at something that says there's a reason for this material to be here, this iron that's ancient. It's also kind of cool collector stuff, but the fact of the matter is it's there and represents one more clue for you to sleuth out and put on your gold map to identify where gold may have been found before or may have been processed or dumped or any number of things. So keep that in mind when you're looking for gold, that it's not always, it's not always the placer deposits and it's not always the load deposits that you're looking for. It could be some other accidental donkey driven event. So that's what I wanted to talk about a bit tonight and kind of give you some thought about that. Uh, I also wanted to show you a few more examples of stuff that might be kind of similar or related or not. Uh, one is uh, I've got Pat Keen here, uh, not too far back, found this really cool uh, calcite, you know, chunk of ore. Doesn't look like gold at all. Now this is not unusual for gold in the desert, and that also came up the other night. That gold in the desert tends to be more rough, tends to be more rugged, and oftentimes is coated with calcite and an iron kind of lime, and can be stuck in the middle of that in a thing called caliche, which is a concretion. That's where that's where you know Pat found it using the detector, and he had to kind of you know chip it out and pry it out to get it free. But it's a pretty big chunk of gold, if you if I don't mind saying it so myself. Nice find. Now the fact is, when you have something like that out there, in the desert, it behaves different than in the mountains. 
you know, we've seen the pictures I've shown of the gold from the mountains where it's tumbled and all that, and tends to glow. Now, sometimes it can be caught into some calcite and concretions and have a lot of mud and stuff packed around it. But in general, it's not going to look as, as kind of grungy as this does. That's the difference between finding something in an area where it's been tumbled a lot by a lot more water and remember, we talked about the tumbling that would happen with gold that would break out from a load deposit in the desert here. And that's a hint that you get from looking at this. It tends to tumble less because remember, it rolls for a bit and then it broadens out into that playa and, and comes to an abrupt halt and buries under a bunch of silt and then gets calcified with a bunch of other stuff. And so what happens here is you've got, you've got this situation where it's a different kind of environment and therefore leaves different puzzling clues as to its origin. This one would tend to say to me, there might be more gold like it nearby because of the nature of the roughness. There might not be because it's in the desert. See the problem? Little conundrum there. So that's one puzzle I thought I'd throw out there. Here's another situation. So we're looking in a, in a gold site survey here and we're kind of looking around at the different places where we might find gold. I've talked about this one a couple months back. In this condition, it's a whole different ball game because the water flow is moving kind of year round and there's this nature of cutting things. And as streams move and erode, what's inside the curve might not be inside. So all of this stuff inside the bend now looks promising, but it's quite possible that this was an ancient flow up here, you know, and X marks the spot that it's actually just beginning to erode into something that would drop a bunch of gold. Don't ever forget that when you're looking at puzzling clues. Just because the common place to look, number one, is here because it's on the inside edge of a bend for a bunch of reasons I talk about in the helical flow and it's in the four by gold hunting in the DVD series, which is mentioned below the GPC series. So up here in this area, it can be there for ancient reasons. Hence, it's another gold puzzle. Doesn't follow the rules. But it will follow the rules if you understand that where it's going to be is maybe in a horizon up above the riverbed and it's now cutting down below. And so that was an ancient riverbed that got stranded by the way the river's been cutting ever since. You just have to think outside the box concerning those kinds of issues. Uh, let's make sure that everything's coming through okay. I see some glitching going on on my screen. I want to make sure it's good. Sound is clear. Image is clear from Oklahoma and yes, so yes, we're going through clear. So that's what I wanted to point out with this picture. Now let's switch to another one and we'll talk about, we've talked about these two. Let's talk about another picture here I've got set up. Here's one that kind of goes along with the square nails and that is Hmm, this is an interesting structure. Notice right, let me erase the board. I want to draw your attention to two things. One, this is a piece of concrete. It's sitting on top of a bunch of bedrock. Why would they form this, you know, if you look at it, it's kind of not a pyramidal, but it's kind of a, a tetrahedral kind of structure. And, it, and it, it's made to fit on top of that. And then it has bolts coming out of the top. It has a bolt coming out of the side right here. What's that all about? Well, these are old retaining structures, old dams for flumes and that kind of stuff. The way you know of its age is kind of how the bolts were made. You have to look up close to see it. You can't see it here, but the, these bolts were forged. So once you start finding something that's antique, forged, and stuck in the middle of the river, and there's several of these towers side by side, you realize that at one time, this whole assembly, I'm going to erase this thing again. And I'm going to paint this a different color just to make it clear. Across here was essentially an old wooden dam to form a reservoir behind it. And what these bolts would have been doing is holding these big beams in place to block the water flow. And so you tie them across and tie them down 
and all that good stuff and then the bolts themselves would be going from top to bottom through these things to hold them together and then the wood would swell and seal now buried inside of this thing is was a flume about 36 inches in diameter and it shot down to the valley below about a thousand feet drop and went to a hydropower plant now what's that all about well this particular location was one of the oldest hydropower plants in the state and the purpose was to power the mines the stamp mills the air the flow of water etc it was put in 1800s that's pretty darn old for a hydropower plant but the reason was there was gold somewhere you wouldn't put in this kind of fabrication in this region without there being some really, really valuable purpose back in those days. So when you see some structure like that, start thinking, what's the history of this place? And should I go do some more research? Are there mines in the area that I could take advantage of knowing where they are? And the fact that their load would tend to drop downhill, downstream in the, in the region that I'm looking. And so I'm going to be looking in a particular way around this kind of structure to understand a little more of the history. So this, again, is cl unusual clues. They're not the usual thing where you're going and you're looking at a site and you're saying, well, the rocks look like this or the water flow looks like that. These things are more historic in their nature. And in some ways, I find them more fascinating. Like this hydro thing is really cool when you dig into it. And so it's one of those things where you find yourself going off on a tangent that could bear fruit in your gold prospecting survey, if you will. And so that's kind of where I wanted to leave you for tonight. I just thought I'd touch bases on this whole subject and, and uh, give you some thought, food for thought on other things you can look for, other prospects that you might want to think about when you're out looking for gold. You know, what does this kind of thing, whoops, that doesn't do any good. What do those nails tell you about gold? Because they do. And what is the thing you're going to want to do about that? Nothing. That's possible. Something small, like, you know, just dig around and see if I can find a few more. Or something bigger. Is there a history of a wagon train through this region? And where did it go? And what is the slope? And where would something, if it rolled off of it, go to? Because chances are good that if there was one accident, there were more. This was before OSHA. <laughs> You know, and the whole principle here was get that stuff up and out of there as fast as you can. And I don't care if it's flooding, raining or storming, you know, it just, that was the nature of the beast. And some of these hillsides were, they still are dangerous. So it's one of those things where something could slip and start moving. And, you know, like I say, a, a jackass could decide that he's going to get upset. Not unlike some politicians today and, and cause all kinds of trouble so that's it for tonight i just thought i'd leave you with that thought uh look for all kinds of clues when you're looking for gold not just the usual ones and be wide open about how you might approach that uh, you never know prospector jess over and out good night and good prospecting we'll see you tomorrow night and don't forget to check out this gold prospectors collection right here at that link you can find all you can about this kind of stuff to start with and get going quickly uh, that offers good through next week and then actually not next week early next week check it out you'll find out when it's due it's just never mind <laughs> so catch you then and good night and good prospecting over now